we've identified five actions that we will undertake now. First, we must acknowledge our mistakes. I hope you feel I've been open about those mistakes. We've examined all the evidence we could find about our work for ESCOM. Nine million emails, hundreds of thousands of documents, including telephone logs, personal emails, financial records. And we conducted over 80 interviews. The facts are we found no evidence our firm engaged in corrupt activity. Let me repeat this as it is important. We found no evidence that our firm engaged in corrupt activity. Since we first published those findings last October, we've kept our internal acquiring going to ensure that no stone is left unturned. This entire inquiry made clear three things. First, McKinsey did not make any payments directly or indirectly to secure any contracts, nor has it aided others in doing so. Second, we did not give ESCOM authorization to pay Trillium. ESCOM has acknowledged that when payments were made, they were well aware of our decision not to partner with Trillium. Third, the suggestion that we got paid for no work is simply not accurate. If anything, our desire to deliver meant that we failed to appreciate the broader risks. Let me also turn to Transnet because I know questions about regiments' actions at Transnet also exist, like Transnet's purchase of 1,064 locomotives assisted by regiments in 2014. Our investigation verifies what we told Parliament. McKinsey withdrew from that work before the tender was awarded. We did not help determine the locomotive prices. We did not help select the winning partner, supplier. And we did not work on the transaction advisory service. When regiments did work with us, we closely monitored their output and performance. Yes, we should have conducted a more thorough and professional due diligence of regiments in 2012. And yes, there were times in 2014 and 15 when our team sought and received the written and spoken word of regiments' executives around compliance with anti-corruption laws. We assumed those assurances were truthful. The exact role of regiments at Transnet is still unclear to us, and we do hope it is fully examined by the authorities. Second, we have returned to ESCOM the fee for our work on the turnaround program. This is something we committed two months ago when we found out ESCOM had not followed the correct procedures for approving the contract. This was a priority for us. We sought many times to repay and it proved less than easy. Late last week, we signed an agreement. The change in leadership at ESCOM and the engagement of the AFU has been important. I am grateful to them. I can tell you the money will be in ESCOM's account today. As a firm, we met this commitment voluntarily. It was the right thing to do. Third, we have disciplined colleagues that have done wrong. Where we've been able to act in our investigation, we have done so. We've dealt with the individuals who violated our professional standards. One partner left the firm during a disciplinary appeal. Another was demoted along with other significant penalties. We also found an instance where research assistance was provided that had nothing to do with our client service role. That is unacceptable to me. I really wish, I really wish that I could say more, but the terms of those actions prevent me from doing so. I can say that illegality or unethical behavior in any guise has no home in McKinsey. I welcome everything that has been done by public leaders and the authorities to piece together and halt state capture. We will continue to cooperate with all relevant authorities or investigations. Should the Portfolio Committee on Public Enterprises report contain any lessons or actions for us, we will act and we will act with speed. If the Honourable Judge Zondo asks us before his commission, we will be willing. If he finds fault with any of our people, we will address those faults. We will examine and can only examine the facts we have access to. I encourage anyone here with any new information or evidence to come to us. It will be pursued fully. And if new failings or findings should come out of any external processes, we will act on them decisively and promptly. Fourth, we have upgraded our internal processes in order to prevent mistakes with our supplier development partners. We have revamped how we pick them. They must now pass a rigorous pre-screening to go onto a vetted list of approved partners. We have set up a new local risk committee so that assessments are made by partners who understand the local context. There will be no way for supplier development partners to start work without contracts. We will not accept recommendations solely on a client say so. We will always check. We have replaced and upgraded our South African office's finance, legal and compliance staff. 
Globally, we've undertaken a firm-wide policy review to identify and close the process gaps where we serve public sector and state-owned company clients and where we work with external partners. As a result, we've strengthened our global compliance activities. Partners must now check proposals to serve all new clients or clients we've not served for over two years, two years with firm leaders. Partners must seek approval of new development partners from firm leaders. All public sector work must be registered with our risk team before proposals are submitted. Annual risk assessments will be conducted for state-owned company clients, and our legal department must review all public sector and state-owned company sole source work. Fifth, we hope to contribute to the future of this country. If we can find some way to be of value to South Africa, then we do stand ready to assist. We are willing to commit resources on a no-cost basis to the country's priorities, such as job creation, economic growth, and attracting inward investment. One area where we've already committed our expertise in other countries around the world is in building the skills of thousands of unemployed young people through our generation programme. All that said, we do not presume to know how or if we can help. We humbly ask that you help us understand if, how and where we can be of service to South Africa.